Hey everyone, Mark here. First, I just want to thank everyone uh, who watched my previous video and who commented or reached out to me to follow up and, and ask other questions. Thank you so much. It, it means a lot. It's kind of the reason why I wanted to start these videos is just to kind of get some conversation going and reach out to people that um, I'm friends with or that I know, or uh, maybe it's someone new and uh, we can learn something new about each other. So this week, I want to talk a little bit about a book that I just finished. Uh, and I read the book over the weekend in two days, a really fast read. And uh, it was really inspiring to me. And it's now my second favorite book. Um, it's called The Surrender Experiment. Um, and uh, in the book, it's, uh, it's kind of a story of this guy's journey through life. Uh, whenever he was in grad school, he decided to... Um, kind of, uh, you know, give up the control that we all tend to want to have over our lives. And, and um, he decided that he was going to just surrender everything uh, to chance or to, you know, the way in which life was meant to roll out and, and unfold for this man. Uh, and he allowed God to just, uh, you know, take over and let those things happen. Uh, so in the, in the course of the story, uh, he moves out into the um, kind of the woody rural area in Florida uh, and his goal is he's just going to meditate and uh, and relax. Uh, but over time, uh, people show up, and then he, and then he builds a, a small house, and then someone else comes and they build another house, and then eventually he's got a meditation and a yoga studio going on. Uh, and then later, because of his ability to build and make houses, he starts a, a, a company to build houses. Uh, and, and these are all things that kind of just happened, and he just went kind of went with it. So it's an, it's an amazing story of uh, how his life kind of unfolded uh, through this idea of surrendering and not always wanting to be in control. And uh, I can certainly recall a large part of my life, um, you know, being frustrated when things weren't going my way. And um, I, I, if I think back on the moments that were the most pivotal in my life and the moments that really changed the, the course of the direction of my life and really set me on the path that I'm currently on now, those were all of the moments in which I did have a moment of surrender where it was just kind of the serendipitous thing that happened that was a catalyst that shot me off in a different direction. And I wasn't searching it. I wasn't seeking it. I wasn't going uh, into that realm or whatever. It just kind of happened. Um, and so, um, yeah, I highly recommend the book. And I know someone else is going to ask me, well, if that's your second favorite book, what's your first favorite book? My first favorite book is uh, Be Here Now by Ram Das, um, you know, which who is here, here prominently with me at all times, along with the rest of my friends who hang out with me every day. But um, maybe I'll do another episode about my first favorite book and, and what that means to me and how that's also changed my life. But uh, in the uh, Surrender book, the, uh, the Surrender Experiment, um, you know, it's a great story and it's all true as far as I can tell, you know, I mean, it's who, who am I to judge, but uh, it's it's very inspiring nonetheless. And some of the things that, that were in the book uh, reminded me of my own journey. And there were even, you know, certain, you know, connections to books that he read and people that he knew and people that he met that have also been a part of my journey. So there's some personal connection to that story there, which is why I also enjoyed it. But it really got me to thinking, you know, like, you know, where where am I right now? How did I get here? And uh, what what's um, kind of uh, opened the doors for me to be where I am? And the first thing that I remembered um, way back early in my career, I was um, I was attending university and uh, I, was, I was attending night school um, and uh, also working full time. And I was working at Walmart. <laughs> Uh, so this, this was back in Texas and, uh, I was working at Walmart and I was working in the frozen food section, uh, stocking the frozen food items for Walmart, you know, and, 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 uh, at that time, uh, I, I wasn't really sure what I was doing in life. I, you know, I didn't really have any aims or aspirations. I had one point thought I wanted to be a tattoo artist or a rock musician or, you know, any, any kind of things more in that direction. Um, but uh, I got really fed up with my Walmart job. I couldn't, I couldn't do it for more than a couple of years. And so one day I just quit. I just, I just, I just said, I'm done. And I walked out, <laughs> I just, you know, uh, like, like mic drop, I'm out of here. And um, I, I went home that evening and uh, I picked up the newspaper uh, of, of which this, this is how we used to look for jobs is you would, you would get the newspaper and go to the job section of the newspaper and look for jobs. 
and um, I saw this job posting for an animal handler. I said, oh, wow, that's, that sounds really interesting. Uh, and at the time, I had, I'd had some experience in, in raising reptiles. It was another one of my little projects that I, that I was into, was ra raising um, you know, snakes and turtles and lizards and this kind of stuff. Um, but uh, I thought, okay, well, that, that sounds pretty cool. I'll, I'll go check it out. So I went and applied for the job, got hired. Uh, and so then I started working at this uh, Living Science Materials Center that was also a part of the education network in Texas. So uh, it was my job to take care of all the animals that were living in a part of this facility because these um, animals and scientific specimens were being used by schools and by teachers and children uh, all over Central and South Texas. So I had a huge you know, blast, a, a lot of fun working that job. It was just kind of an oddball, weird job. And I met some really great people who I'm still uh, deeply uh, close to and friends with. And um, it was during this time that um, schools would bring children to the science center and they would do demonstrations and uh, kind of kind of like a field trip, right? And so uh, at some point it became my job to lead these field trips. And so kids would come in and I would you know, take the snake out and show the snake and we would talk about the, uh, the, the living environments and also we'd talk about the, the natural habitats and I would give this whole spiel. And so uh, several teachers and also employees of the science center said, wow, you're really good at this. You should pursue um, education. And uh, I don't know, I, I, I just said, okay, sure, let's do that. So I changed my degree to science education because I, I, I still had like a year and a half of my bachelor's degree. And um, the, uh, the education organization that I was working for at the time also had a teacher training program uh, of which they allowed me to participate in that program alongside my full-time job. So I got a teaching certificate, I finished my bachelor's degree, and then I started teaching. I uh, never would have figured that that would be something that I wanted to do. I never in my childhood or youth said, I want to grow up to be a teacher. Um, my earliest recollections of my, tr my career choice was I wanted to be a truck driver uh, because I grew up in a family that owned a trucking company. Uh, and so that was uh, the inspiration for my youth. Uh, and, you know, I've been uh, in education and an educator ever since then, working in multiple different roles from, uh, you know, classroom teacher uh, to administrator to a nonprofit organizer uh, to now vice president of education for an education technology company. And I've been to schools um, all over the world. And I've helped schools and uh, learning centers um, who want to do innovative and uh, experimental learning practices with project-based learning and uh, using tools and equipment like makerspaces, robotics, 3D printing. It's this whole world of stuff that, that I never really uh, ever thought about as, as a child. But each, each opportunity that came to me um, th through the course of my career happened serendipitously. And I surrendered to that moment and said, Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's uh, let's move to Hong Kong and sell everything that we own and uh, work overseas. Uh, you know, like okay, let's uh, travel around the world and help teachers um, design and implement makerspaces. I never sought out to do any of these things; they just happen. So that's why the book Surrender Experiment was just such an aha moment for me, uh, because it, it really showed me that uh, th this is this is a real thing, you know. And so what I'm curious about. Uh, you know, if you could respond and, and, and tell me, you know, what are some moments in your life where you felt like you weren't really necessarily like on that road or on that journey, but something happened and you surrendered and now you're there and you're reflecting back on that now thinking like, wow, that was actually pretty uh, an important and significant part of my life that just happened. Uh, and also, you know, if you want to read the book, The Surrender Experiment and, uh, you know, get back with me, tell me what you thought of it and uh, we can continue the discussion. But uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next week. Cheers, everyone.